Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast. Hour one. This is London. London calling in the home, overseas, and European services of the BBC and through United Nations Radio Mediterranean. And this is John Snag speaking. Supreme Headquarters, Allied Expedition Reports, have just issued communique number one, and in a few seconds I will read it to you. Under the command of General Eisenhower, Allied naval forces supported by strong air forces, began landing Allied armies this morning on the northern coast of France. I'll repeat that communique. Communique number one. Under the command of General Eisenhower, Allied naval forces, supported by strong air forces, began landing Allied armies this morning on the northern coast of France. I'm lying down at full length here in the cornfield, just in the hedges around me. I can see many men taking shelter behind the banks wearing their steel helmets while the terrific barrage goes on around us. To reach the palisade, I joined a column who were waiting across a slough. The water came nearly to their armpits, and they had to hold their rifles and equipment over their heads. The water was rather warm, but the bottom was a slimy mess. When a man got to the far side of the slough, he would always stop in a maddening way, holding the, holding the rest of us up. We shouted angrily, but when we got there, each one of us stopped too. The reeds on the far bank were loaded with mines. One man lay at the top of the bank, dead. The mines had been marked with bits of paper, and soldiers at the top advised just how to climb so as not to venture into dangerous ground. There were more dead men along the narrow path which led up the palisade. Suddenly a voice said, Watch yourself, fella, that's a mine. A soldier sprawled on the bank, was speaking. He had one foot half blown off. He'd stepped on a mine a short time earlier. Now, while he waited for litter bearers, he was warning other soldiers about other mines in that vicinity. I took a last look at the greatest armada in history before going on the flat. It was, it was too immense to describe. 79 years ago today, more than 156,000 men stormed the beaches of Normandy, D-Day, the greatest land invasion in the history of planet Earth through this day. And we still feel the effects of it today. Now, I'm prone to memorialize important days in history on this program. I think it is important today to start the show instead of end the show with something like this, uh, above perhaps more pressing news in large part because what happened then still reverberates now more so as the United States at this point heads into a presidential election season for 2024 where we cast doubt on our role in history moving forward. There is this sense from some that China is on the rise It is inevitable that China will be dominant, and it is a choice. Decline is a choice. So much of the conversation, the unstated conversation that we have as a nation right now is about our choice to decline and whether or not we will reverse it. I don't think anyone listening right now can... Uh, argue with the fact that we have somehow made societally a choice to be in decline. Whether it's who we vote for, whether our voting is to be entertained as opposed to matter, our life choices, the collapse of the family, 
the ride around town when now you realize how many people are smoking weed in their car while they're driving decline is a choice and and these are all indicative of choices to decline Collapsing families, collapsing schools, collapsing grades, businesses shutting down, keeping us under lockdown, demanding the government does that we take one size fits all approaches to much of life while we ignore the fact that many of the choices the government is making are choices that actually benefit the Chinese Communist Party, not us. People being distracted by issues that don't really, in the grand scheme of things, matter. A war on truth where one is not allowed to suggest that perhaps boys can't become girls. You're yelled at, shut down, chased out of polite society as a bigot for doing so. 79 years ago, 156,000 Allied troops stormed the beaches of Normandy to confront real evil, and we forget real evil. Hitler literally was rounding up Jews mostly, placing them in concentration camps, and exterminating them. Wiped out millions of people, tried to annihilate an entire race of people, That's not to diminish the things in our day and age that we perceive are bad, but we should keep these things in perspective. And to some degree, we are allowed at this point in our society to focus on the small ball issues because we solve so many of the big issues. We can have our culture war contra Thompson of today in large part because 156,000 men stormed beaches in Normandy, France, killed the Nazis, won a war, and put us into a post-World War II era of peace where we could get some level of complacency as we led the world. That's not to say there were not conflicts around the world. Certainly there were. Certainly there were wars we participated in. Certainly there was a Cold War with the Soviet Union where at any moment people believed they could be wiped out in a nuclear holocaust, which was not to be. And then you come through all of these things and you have 9-11 and this great American psyche comes unraveled a little bit by the realization that we could be hit at home and we go to war. And a lot of our young men and women go off to war and that war seems to last forever. And people become jaded and complacent and tired and they're ready for the sleeping giant that was awoken in World War II to go back to sleep. Let everybody else deal with the world's problems. We see that in the conversations about Ukraine. Today, a dam has been blown up in Ukraine, flooding the region. Both sides are blaming each other. The Ukrainians say it was the Russians. The Russians say it was the Ukrainians. It doesn't really matter except for the point that there is a real war happening there where thousands and thousands of people are dying. And there are people in this country who are convinced we should just let the Russians have it. We shouldn't fund the Ukrainians. Uh, We should go back to sleep. We should get off the world stage. We don't need to be involved. And the problem and the lesson that we learned with World War I and World War II was that when the United States is not involved, other nations who don't share our interests stand up and get involved against our interest. That's just the reality of it. We fund the Ukrainians to fight the Russians so that we do not have to send our sons and daughters to fight the Russians. It's a good trade-off in my mind. You say, well, we shouldn't be funding it at all. Let the Russians have it. History shows us the Russians are not content to just have Ukraine. Eventually, the Russians will wish to have other nations. At what point do you say they've had enough and they can have no more when they've had all of Europe? They still haven't touched us. We're fine, really, are we? These are the fights we're having today. We're having these fights because we fought so well 79 years ago, storming beaches in Normandy. And now we have this great contest before us in 2024 in this country of how will we proceed into the future? General Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, says we actually are arguably in a confrontation even now with China. Both countries are significant powers, great powers, if you want to call it that, uh, in the world today. Both countries have significant amounts of nuclear weapons. They've got large and capable militaries. 
so a conflict between great powers. Arguably, we're in, for sure, we're in competition, and arguably, we're in confrontation, but we're not yet in conflict. We're not in conflict. Can we do something to avoid that conflict? The Chinese, I mentioned yesterday, have begun instructing their farmers to plow and plant, even their fallow fields. This came through a small news blurb with an email list that I subscribe to, noting that this sounds very much like the Chinese are giving themselves time to stockpile grain in anticipation of war. The Chinese seem intent on making it happen. We seem intent on letting them do it. If the United States does not maintain some level of leadership over the world, and I know you think we don't have the money, and we don't, we're exhausted, and we are, but who else will do it? The United States has benefited as long as it has after World War II because by leading in the post-World War era, the world aligned to benefit the United States with favorable trade terms and favorable interest rates. You and I have a lifestyle that people in other countries cannot afford because we live in the United States of America in a post-World War II environment where the global trade has been aligned to our benefit. The global banking system and financial system and uh, cash transaction system and money exchange system and trade systems and port systems and rules and regulations for global commerce have all aligned to our benefit. If we do sit down, If the sleeping giant, the Japanese woke up at Pearl Harbor, goes back to sleep, someone will realign the world against our interests. And your cost of living will go up and your standard of living will decline. Decline is a choice. And the great question for 2024, as we commemorate 79 years ago, men storming the beaches of Normandy, turning the tide in World War II, the largest military campaign in world history. The question is, having stormed the beaches and liberated the world, does the United States make an active choice to decline? I'm not sure I know what we're going to choose. I'm afraid a lot of people are going to choose to decline, not by saying we're declining, but instead by saying we're going to recline and go back to sleep. And that would be bad for all of us. Regardless of the choices we make today, we should at least commend those few remaining heroes who 79 years ago today put their lives on the line to liberate a continent and a world in Europe. D-Day, June 6, 1944, a military campaign that set the world on the course we're still living in today. Bolin Branch uses the finest 100% organic cotton from family farms to your family home. They've got a natural unmatched softness, And they get softer with every wash. Those are the highlights that Bull & Branch wants me to tell you about. Let me tell you about my experience as a longtime customer. Every single room in our house has Bull & Branch sheets. Why? Because they don't pill up over time. Uh, You know, some, they they get a little like like pill of whatever they call it, and, and they get rough. They don't. They get softer every single wash, and they last. They don't wear out. You don't have fraying threads. They just are fantastic, and they really, really do get softer the more you wash them, and they hold up over time. We love them in our house. They've got the perfect weight. They feel kind of snuggly, but you don't get hot in the summertime under them, but you stay warm in the wintertime. It's just, it's it's perfect. I love these sheets. Get 15% off your first order of and Brand Sheets when you use promo code ERIC, E-R-I-C-K, at BolandBranch.com, that's BolandBranch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, Branch.com. The promo code is ERIC. Exclusions apply. See site for details. You will love these sheets as much as everybody in my family does. We got them on all five beds in the house. You can too. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here across the nation. You know, I uh, one of the things that bothers me most about our present society is the number of people I know, good people, people who are friends, people I like, regardless of their politics, based on the on the politician they worship, 
you know exactly where they're going to stand on an issue. And it doesn't matter whether it's it's a Democrat or a Republican. You, you, you got a big, big, big uh, Trump guy. You know where he's going to come down on pretty much everything. You got a big – I don't actually know anyone who's a big Biden guy. I know people who are big Obama people, and you know – exactly who they're going to where they're going to land on issues and it, it goes beyond being liberal conservative or, or republican democrat it has to do particularly if you feel your life beholden to a particular politician you know exactly where they're going to, it's the weirdest thing like for example live golf so i don't know if you've heard this it is really big news all of a sudden uh, Live Golf was the new golf group the PGA Tour went against, and uh, it was so bad. So a year ago, uh, a year ago next week, this was uh, Jay Monahan um, on TV. Listen to this. 9-11 families united sent a letter to the representatives of Phil, Dustin, Bryson, Reed, and others, quote, expressing their outrage towards the golfers for participating in the new league and accusing them of sports washing and betraying the United States, end quote. And that's gotten a lot of steam over the last. Oh, where'd the audio go? And it, well, that's aggravating. The audio cut out Twitter's glitching all of a sudden, but the PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan uh, said he's never had to apologize for being a member of the PGA Tour. They tried to make it a moral play. They tried to make it a moral play with the PGA. Now, the, the interesting thing here is, like, I know guys who, because Trump supported Liv, they're all about Liv. They, they don't care about the game. They cared about where Trump was. But also, I know people who hate Trump so badly. They, they didn't know a thing about Liv Golf, but uh, they loved the PGA. They're not even golfers. My problem with Liv Golf very simply put, all oh, I, I I don't care about Saudi blood money. I'm I'm happy to take some Saudi blood money. <laughs> I, I mean I really I don't get worked up into this outrage about Saudi Arabia. I grew up in the Middle East. I, I this moral outrage over Jamal Khashoggi. No, they shouldn't have killed him. But uh, they're a sovereign nation that did a bad thing, and many of the people most outraged are perfectly fine taking money from China, which actually runs concentration camps. Um, and my problem with live golf is that it got the meritocracy out of golf. Golf has been a great meritocratic sport. You can go compete and qualify and get a PGA card and play the tours. And if you do well enough and you make the cuts, you make money. And lives uh, essentially took a lot of the golfers who were retiring or not doing as well as they used to, but had big names, paid them an exorbitant sum of money, and they came in to have these golf tournaments. Uh, there was no meritocratic action there. They paid a ton of money for a lot of golfers, hundreds of millions of dollars to some of them. They offered uh, Tiger Woods uh, above uh, half a half billion dollars, who he said no. And now they're going to merge. And, and the problem here is, is how are they going to keep the meritocracy for the guys? I, I, I know a guy, actually, who is trying to qualify to get his PGA Tour card right now. What's going to happen to guys like that? But also... For the PGA side of it, they really did make it this moral outrage taking Saudi blood money. And now they're like, hey, you know what? We'll take it too. That should have never been the argument. They never should have taken a moral high ground argument on it. It was always dumb. But that's what they did. And now they're going to take it. And from what the news reports are saying, none of the players knew this was coming, including people like Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy, who took principal positions on the meritocracy aspect of it and didn't want to play and live, and now they'll all be back together. What a mess. Okay, I, I you know, there are messy situations around the world in politics, and one of the groups fighting for a limited government, even at the local level, is Americans for Prosperity, and you can join them. They've got, uh, they, they, they've got chapters all around the country, over 30 chapters in states, and they're building them in states. You may not have one in your state. You may want to help them build it. And what they do is they teach you how to be a really good conservative activist, how to approach local leaders, how to approach state uh, representatives, state senators, even members of Congress to make your case for limited government, build out an agenda for uh, for limited government. If you're interested at all in being a part of it, go to AmericansForProsperity.org slash Eric, AmericansForProsperity.org slash E-R-I-C-K. Sign up with them. Find your local chapter. We had Daniel call yesterday who's now a paid activist for Americans for Prosperity. 
They want great activists around the country. You should consider join me and them, americansforprosperity.org slash Eric. All right, uh, Philip was able to, to track down this audio file. I, I, gotta, I wanna play you the full thing here. Uh, Dave Portnoy actually is, it, it put it up on Twitter uh, where the audio doesn't cut out. You just, you gotta listen to this exchange. This is uh, the PGA commissioner talking to Jim Nance on CBS about uh, Live Golf breaking away. This was a year ago next week. I want to ask about this. There was a story that was first reported uh, in the New York Post yesterday by Brian Wacker about a 9-11 coalition of families and survivors of the 2001 terrorist attacks. Um, 9-11 families united sent a letter to the representatives of Phil, Dustin, Bryson, Reed, and others quote, expressing their outrage towards the golfers for participating in the new league and accusing them of sports washing and betraying the United States, end quote. And that's gotten a lot of steam over the last 24 hours. That story first reported again in the New York Post. How much did you talk to your players about the possible ramifications if they sign on with the new league? Well, I talked to players I've talked at a player meeting, and I've and I've talked to a number of players uh, individually uh, for a long period of time. And I think you'd have to be living under a rock to not know that there are significant implications. And as it relates to the families of 9/11, uh, I have two families that are close to me that lost loved ones, and so my heart goes out to them. And I would ask, you know, any player that has left or any player that would ever consider leaving have you ever had to apologize for being a member of the pga tour oh okay you know what i'm gonna get off the beaten path philip you're just gonna have to wait for my other video we'll put it off (laughs) it's your fault anyway we got to come to terms with saudi arabia it was dumb. It was it was always dumb of Jay Monahan, the commissioner of the PGA, to try to be morally outraged by Live Golf. I, I want to explain to you this. Uh, no one leveled a major moral outrage against the nation or kingdom of Saudi Arabia because the 9-11 attackers all came from Saudi Arabia. That only became a thing after Jamal Khashoggi, who was not a great dude, by the way, didn't deserve to die, to be chopped into bits and his body disposed of, or flushed down the drain, whatever they did to his body. Didn't deserve it, but he he, he wasn't some sort of hero here. The Saudis killed him. Uh, Mohammed bin uh, Saudi, um, the king apparent, I guess you could say. Uh, He's not actually the king, but he's going to become the king. He's the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. Mohammed bin Salman, yeah, he ordered Khashoggi being killed. The media has not been able to let it go. So members of the media who claim to be fair and objective can't let go that the crown prince of Saudi Arabia had a journalist for the Washington Post murdered. And the media itself has shaped the narrative against Saudi Arabia, vilifying it for that act. Now, understandably so, literally the crown prince of Saudi Arabia had a guy killed. Best we can tell, they chopped him into bits and flushed him down the drain. He was a journalist. He wrote for the Washington Post. From what I know of him, though, he was not a particularly spectacular person. But he didn't deserve to die. But the reality is that Saudi Arabia is also an ally, and we have always been able to maintain allyships with countries that were not fantastic countries. Only after that did the media decide to take a purity of soul Uh, view of things, that we can't be allies with any country that uh, is abusive and and has humanitarian rights violations. Well, now, what's so funny about it is many of those reporters who would take that position work for ABC News, 
ABC News does a massive pile of business through its parent company, Disney, with China, a nation that runs concentration camps and is systematically exterminating a race of people. And so many of the media outlets and voices on the left who would condemn Saudi Arabia turn a blind eye to China. In fact, if anything, you should know in my mind, much of the outrage directed at Saudi Arabia is a proxy for people's outrage against China. And they don't believe they can, because of their position, be outraged at China. Therefore, they take it out on Saudi Arabia. And they can use Jamal Khashoggi to do it. And they can say, you know what, this was terrible. This was awful. We can't do business with him. And one of the people in that position is named Joseph Robinette Biden. The president of the United States thinks the Saudi crown prince is a thug and yet had to go to Saudi Arabia and fist bump him and grovel to him and try to get him to produce more oil. And guess what? The Saudis are again making oil cutbacks, driving up the price of oil. They're also making kissy face with Russia and China now and Venezuela, people interest countries opposed to the interests of the United States. Why? Because Joe Biden has refused to deal with the Saudi Arabians. And if we're not going to deal with Saudi Arabia, they're going to go elsewhere. Saudi Arabia has been under regular terrorist attack. You don't get that covered in the same American media that vilifies Saudi Arabia. But for my lifetime, Saudi Arabia, despite its flaws and problems, was a fairly stable country. In the last number of years, the Saudi Arabians have been subject to regular terrorist attacks from a group of people called the Houthis who live in Yemen, the country south of Saudi Arabia. The Houthis funded by the terror regime of Iran. The terror regime of Iran, Joe Biden and the media want to normalize while alienating the Saudi Arabians who we have military bases with and longtime cooperation with. It's been absurd. Saudi Arabia has been on Team America for quite some time, but the American press corps and Joe Biden decided to give them the middle finger. The precipitated event was Jamal Khashoggi, but I do believe it would have been anything. They don't like the Saudis. They don't like the Saudis because what does Saudi Arabia's wealth come from? Oil. And fossil fuels are bad, according to the left. So they can say all they want that it's Jamal Khashoggi, it's Jamal Khashoggi. These are the same people who make kissy face with China. The problem for us here is that uh, they have a name and a face, Jamal Khashoggi. They don't have the name or the face of the man who stood in front of the tank in Tiananmen Square so they can blow him off. They don't have the names and faces of the Uyghur families being exterminated by the Chinese so they can blow them off. Look at how the NBA reacted over the Hong Kong protests, lecturing us on George Floyd here, turning a blind eye to China there. Disney refusing to show Hong Kong protesters and Falun Gong at, at basketball tournaments, dragging them out of the stands. But oh my gosh, Jamal Khashoggi, we can't take money from Saudi Arabia. Guess what? Someone's going to buy their oil. Might as well be us. Mohammed bin Salman has actually been, for Saudi Arabia, pretty progressive, allowing women to drive, among other things. You know, when I was a kid living over there, you, women weren't allowed to drive. But we lived in Dubai, which was fairly liberal. My mom was able to drive. We had a car. But we had friends who went to Saudi Arabia for a tournament, and it was during Ramadan, and the girls were held down by the secret police, and their legs spray-painted black. They were at a volleyball tournament. They were wearing volleyball shorts. They came out of the school grounds in their volleyball shorts, did not have pants on. It was Ramadan season, and they were dragged away by the secret police and their legs spray-painted black because they shouldn't be showing bare skin in Saudi Arabia during Ramadan, these American girls. It's not quite like that now. It's still way more conservative than the United States but women can drive now. They've made some progress. You know, the left, yep, I am going to go there. Let's take Pinochet. Pinochet in Chile. 
Pinochet was a Western capitalist, got the uh, University of Chicago economic team to develop their uh, economic plan in Chile, reformed the country, took it back from the communists, but Pinochet was also a dictator, and he had a habit of loading communists up on helicopters, flying them out to the Pacific, and dropping them off. Killed a lot of innocent people that way, a lot of protesters, and a lot of communists. He's vilified by Western leaders now who don't like that a man like that was able to lead a country like Chile, turn it to the West, turn it to capitalists, fight the communists through strongman tactics, and we're supposed to actually think Pinochet's the bad guy. He dropped people into the ocean from helicopters. Yes, bad. He did bad things. But what was the man's overall legacy? He beat the communists. In fact, Chile just had a referendum on redoing its constitution, and, and the, the socialists lost. The Chileans want their good free market economy that Pinochet put in place. People are complex people. Pinochet did bad things, but Pinochet, in the history of humanity, saved a country from the grips of communists funded by the Soviets, which should be a good thing in our national interest. The, the Saudis have done many bad things, including killing Jamal Khashoggi. But the Saudis have otherwise been in our camp. We've relied on their oil. It's kept our economy going. They've allowed our military bases there. They have been our partners in the Middle East. But because of the Jamal Khashoggi situation, Joe Biden decided to, to turn his back on the Saudis, who have stopped giving us our oil, driven up our oil prices, caused our energy prices to go up, helped contribute to our inflation, and are now looking at the Chinese and the Russians as perhaps new new allies for them. It's insanity on the part of the Biden administration and the American media to not be able to move on from Jamal Khashoggi. The media wants to move on from everything leftists do in the world and wants to ignore the Chinese running concentration camps. The ABC News Disney team does not care, and the NBA makes all sorts of money out of China, and the CNN crowd and the Washington Post crowd and the New York Times crowd does not say jack about the New York Times. Or the, the NBA making a t pile of money off of China, communist Chinese who ruthlessly murder dissidents. But you kill Jamal Khashoggi from the Washington Post. We're never allowed to do business with the Saudis again. You should at least recognize the double standard, whether you like Saudi Arabia or not. It was foolish of Jay Monahan and the PGA Tour leadership to try to make a moral case against doing business with the Saudis because now they're going to take their money as well. And they look like pieces of crap because they made the moral case. They didn't just make the case about the PGA being a meritocracy and people are able to compete to get into it. And people who lost their PGA cards are the ones who wanted to go to live golf, who weren't up to snuff any more of the tournaments, but had big brands and name ID and sponsorships and the like. They, they could have done that. They chose to make the moral case about Saudi Arabia. And the media loved the moral case because the media that will not abide any moral case against China really hates the Saudis. So does Biden. It has upended the structures put in place post-World War II by the United States to maintain order in the world. The Saudis are now looking at our rivals on the world stage as their allies, profoundly disruptive to us in the process. And they can do it and the media and the Biden administration will turn a blind eye to them because they're all about moral cases about Saudi Arabia while they ignore Chinese concentration camps and all sorts of other immoral behavior by other nations on the planet because really it's all about fossil fuels and climate change, and that's why the Saudis are bad. They don't really have to do with Khashoggi. He's just the cover. They're really upset because Saudi Arabia produces fossil fuels, and that's what really makes them bad. If you want to understand why they can give China a pass on concentration camps and not give Saudi Arabia a pass on Jamal Khashoggi, that's it. Climate change. It all comes back to that. All right. Got that off my chest. You know what, Philip? You might as well use that. Send that out. Push it out. It's going to make everybody mad, but it's still the truth. All I do is tell you guys the truth. Now, I want to tell you the truth about gold and silver. Some of you, it may be a good fit for your portfolios, maybe, possibly. And if you want it, you should check out 
Advantage Gold. They want to help you. They want to be the people you buy from, but they also want to be the people who educate you about using it. I don't know if you know this or not, but the IRS has certain rules regarding using precious metals as part of an IRA, a 401k, uh, and you need to get those guidelines. Advantage Gold, if you call them 800-450-2566, they can send you a free gold IRA investment kit so you understand the rules for compliance with the IRS for an IRA or a 401k. Well, you may just want gold and silver for your general investments. They can help you with that as well. they got the best prices. they got the best team in place. They are highly knowledgeable, and they just want to educate you so that you can use precious metals in your portfolio. 800 800- Four five zero two five six six is their number. That's eight hundred four five zero two five six six. Call Advantage Gold. Let them educate you on using precious metals in your portfolio for your retirement or general investment strategies. And tell them I sent you eight hundred four five zero two five six six. We still haven't even gotten to the UFO story. We will get there, but first, I'm going to go to David. Welcome to the show, David. How are you? Hi. How you doing, Eric? Great. I was listening. I was listening to you talking about the Saudi Arabia and the and the uh, the journalist that was killed over there, and how you believe that he is that is the reason the Democrats are hating on Saudi Arabia. But I kind of disagree with that. I think that's just a red herring, and I'll tell you why. If you Google Donald Trump Mid East peace agreements, you will see the real reason that the Democrats and their propaganda ministry loathe Saudi Arabia. They have come to historic peace agreements between Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Sudan, and Israel, something that was unheard of during Barack Obama's tenure. And now not only have they reached peace agreements, but they have commercial flights now. Between right now, Israel now, and United Arab Emirates. The, yeah, so it's the Abraham Accords. I've mentioned this before. This exactly. is an area Trump deserves. If the world, if the Nobel Peace Prize really weren't just a subsidy for socialists, uh, Donald Trump would get the Nobel Peace Prize for the Abraham Accords. Now, it, it actually didn't involve Saudi Arabia at the time. You still can't fly from uh, Riyadh to Tel Aviv, although they're working on it. I'm told they're, they're behind the scenes. Um, but there is something to right. do that. They, they don't like the Saudis because Trump likes the Saudis. But Trump also liked the Saudis in large part because of their oil. And the left hates them because they produce so much fossil fuel. You're right, though. The, the Jamal Khashoggi thing, it's just a cover. They don't want to admit the reason they hate the Saudis is is all this other stuff. So they got to find uh, – and, and uh, Mohammed bin, bin Salman overplayed his hand on that and gave them the ammunition – to be able to say, this is why we hate Saudi Arabia. They hated them before this. It's why Barack Obama was trying to do a deal with Iran. He wanted to marginalize the Saudis. That was well before Khashoggi. He wanted a deal with Iran to marginalize the Saudis. It has everything to do with climate change and the production of oil and, and not being beholden to the Saudis for any reason. He'd rather be in bed with the terror regime. Okay, when we come back, uh, you, we we got to talk. I will talk about the UFOs before I talk about the border stuff. We got to talk about the UFOs. The UFOs, if you haven't heard, big story. A whistleblower has come forward who worked for the government and claims we actually have extraterrestrial uh, vehicles, that the U.S. government has them in its possession. And I want to talk about the story. It's if it's gotten buzz from people on a line, but I mean, shouldn't this be the biggest story on planet Earth today? Well, maybe not. And I want to explain both sides of the story to you when we come back. Before I tell you what I think about it, and I'm happy to take your phone calls as well. 877-973-7425. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.